Yes, uh, the uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about uh, in Prolog is this concept of uh, cuts. So, what do we new cu use cuts for? Well, we can use cuts to eliminate part of the search tree which we don't want to investigate further. So, recall from our discussion, we are saying that uh, we have been saying that Prolog is searching for solutions to our queries, and we can uh, think of a search tree being built while the solutions are found. Well, while the solutions are, are being searched for. And uh, in some cases, uh, we might want to eliminate part of the search because we don't want to search for further solutions, for example. So we can indeed make the search more efficient by removing part of the search tree uh, or stop the backtracking mechanism. And uh, we will also see later that, uh, at the end of this talk, that the cuts can be used to implement negation. So, uh, the syntax for cut is, uh, is the uh, exclamation sign. So, a, this would be an example of a rule. B uh, is true if x, y comma set comma w is true and so on but notice that we have a cut sign here or exclamation sign in between and uh, we will in in in, uh, in a minute we will talk about what this really means but uh, notice that cuts are kind of controversial because they make prolog in a way procedural so a part of the declarativeness of a program is eliminated by using cuts because we are then uh, uh, changing the behavior of the search mechanism. So remember from our discussion uh, on uh, logic languages, we discussed this term uh, declarative programming. And here on Wikipedia it says in computer science uh, declarative programming is a programming paradigm that expresses the logic of, uh, of a computation without describing its control flow. So, and this is what we have been doing, or, or what, what Prolog is all about. We provide the logic, the abstract machine provides the control flow. And if we are using cuts, we are in a way uh, affecting the control flow ourselves, and that means we are uh, we uh, eliminate the part of the uh, declarativeness of the program by using it. And that's why uh, cuts are kind of controversial in this uh, pure uh, logic uh, uh, programming world. Now, okay, uh, let's uh, look at this example here. We have a rule that says B uh, is true if C is true, but we have a cut in front of it. So what does this really mean? Well, if we put a cut at, at this point here in, in the clause, it means really that if, if uh, C fails, for example, then, then no further rules involving B will be tried. So imagine that we had more rules for B, but if we have a cut here, then if C fails, then we will not try other rules for B. See, if, if, the, if there was no cut here, then normally, assuming that we had many rules for B, if C would fail, we would try the next rule for B. If that one would fail, we would try the third rule for B, and so on. But in this case, if we put a cut here, we're basically eliminating further uh, searches for solutions for, for this uh, B uh, relation here. So what this really means here is that uh, if, B, uh, if C is false, then B is false, because no further s uh, searches will be made or attempts will be made to, to prove B. Now, uh, 
As always, it's good to look at an example to better understand what we're talking about. So let's look at this program here. Uh, we have a relation A and one is in that relation if B is true. Two is in that relation if E is true. What is B? B is true if C is true or B is true as D is true. And then we have here something that we've probably not seen before. We say C fails basically. This really makes C always false by using the fail predicate here. And then D is a fact and E is a fact. So the first question here is how many solutions are there to the query A of X? Well, so we're posing a query a of x, it means that we have, Prolog will need to unify a of x and the first rule for a, so a of 1, and when that unification is carried out, x will be instantiated with the constant 1. So x equal to 1 is true if b is true, b is true if c is true, but C fails, so we were not able to prove B. But there is another rule for B, so here the backtracking mechanism is in place. Uh, another solution, we, we were trying to prove B, we used the first rule for B, but that failed. We backtrack and we try the second rule for B which says that B is true if D is true, and D is a fact. So we uh, Prolog will succeed with this, and one solution is then X is equal to 1. But then, once we have found that solution, there are other solutions. So we try the second rule. A of 2, we have to unify the term A of 2 with A of X, we do that by instantiating the variable x with the value 2 and a of 2 is true if e is true and e is a fact so that's obviously a true. So this program has two solutions x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2. Sorry this query has two solutions. Now just to make sure let me consult this program, it's called cut, I think, cut, right. And if I do now a of x, I get x is equal to 1, I hit semicolon to get another solution, I get x equal to 2. Now, uh, the question here is, what if we replace b, uh, the, the rule b is true if c is true, with b is true if cut c is true. What does that really mean? Well, we said earlier that if c is false, then we will need to backtrack. For example, uh, once we have tried c, we will need to backtrack because there are two rules for b. But in, the, in this case, we're changing the behavior by using a cut and we're saying prologue, do not backtrack and try to find uh, further uh, uh, solutions to B. Do not try further rules for B. So only the rule B is true if C is true will be tried, not the second rule which says B is true if D is true. So if I consult this program, which is called cut2, and notice the only change is that instead of b is true with c is true, we put a cut at the front uh, of the of the of the right hand side at the beginning of the right hand side. Okay, notice that I just get warnings because I'm redefining uh, the relations that I had earlier. And now I'm going to post exactly the same query as I did before. And now I only get the solution x is equal to 2. And the question is why is that? 
So we, 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 without the cut, we saw that we had two, two solutions, x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2. And now with the cut, we only have a one solution, x is equal to 2. Um, just to want to make sh this is some some additional stuff here that shouldn't be here right uh, so what happens let's look at this search tree we talked about earlier that, that we can we can uh, 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 envision a search tree being built while Prolog is finding solutions to queries. So we started with a of x and the program said uh, a of 1 is true if b is true so we instantiated x with 1 this is a substitution here uh, and we checked if b is true and b is true if c is true and c failed so c uh, is false basically so we will we backtracked and tried another rule for b which is says that b is true if d is true so prolog searched all the way down here it backtracked and then tried this solution and found yes now i'm talking about without the cut and there was another solution for x with this substitution x is 2 and that's the part, that's the second rule for A, which says A of 2 is true if E is true and E is a fact. So we get a yes there. So this is the search tree. Where, and what happens then when we do the cut is that we are trimming this branch here. Prolog will not search this branch. And we only get X is equal to 2 because when we tried the substitution X is equal to 1, we got... Um, we got a false or backtrack here and we did not try this one so we only got the branch from the root the substitution x is 2 and why didn't we try this branch here why is it trimmed it's trimmed because we have a cut here we have an exclamation point here which says that if if there's if there's backtrack if we need to backtrack we will not try another rule for b so in general we can assume okay let, let, let's look at the general case for the cuts so we assume that we have n clauses from s1 up to sn for this predicate p for any predicate p and uh, the the kth rule looks like this the kth rule has a cut so if during the evaluation of a goal for p of t we find the kth clause in the list being used let's assume this clause the kth clause is being used and this kth clause has a cut then we have the following cases we have the following two cases uh, if an evaluation of B fails, then we proceed by trying the K plus first clause. So if B fails here, then we don't try the rest of the, the Kth clause, but we go to the Kth plus one clause. If B fails, we try the next clause in the list. That's the first kind of a trivial case uh, if instead the evaluation of B succeeds then cut is evaluated and it's always true and the evaluation proceeds with C so let's go back if B succeeds then we go to the cut which is always true and then we try C we try to prove C In case of backtracking, all the alternative ways of computing B are eliminated. So, for example, let's if uh, if there are many choices for B, we would need to backtrack and try all of them. But it, since we have a cut, 
we are cutting away the, those branches. So this means that, for ex let's assume, for example, that C fails, then no other rules for B will be tried. They have been eliminated by the cut. And as well as all the alternatives provided fr uh, by the clauses from the kth to the nth to compute p of t are eliminated as well. So we are not only eliminating here uh, all the alternatives for p, but also all the alternatives for this p uh, uh, relation from this kth uh, clause to the nth clause. So one might uh, in, uh, envision that the first clause will be tried, and the second clause, and the third, and the kth clause, but since we have a cut here, none of the alternatives here will be uh, tried. Uh, notice, given that b is true. Now if b is false, then the kth plus 1 will be tried, and the k plus 2 will be tried, and so on. But if b is true, then the cut will be enforced, and the cut will always result in, um, it will always succeed, and then we will try C. But after that, we will not try any other alternatives for B, and we will not try any other alternatives for P. So, Let's look at an example with using cuts in, in a guess and a verify rule. So remember, we talked about guess and verify earlier. We had uh, a conclusion is true if guess, a conclusion S is true if guess is true and verify is true. And now what we're doing, we're putting a cut in between guess and verify. So what that, does that mean? It means that Prolog stops guessing once verify has been tested once. So if we succeed with guess, the cut will be enforced, it's always true, and then we verify S, and since we have a cut here, we will not try other solutions for guess. And, uh, and indeed we will not try other solutions for conclusion if we had more rules for conclu conclusion. So here we have an example, and the only difference between these two examples here, on the left hand side on the right hand side, is that we have a cut in the guess and verify rule here, b of x. So let's actually try it without the cut first and see what we get. Uh, and let's just trace it by hand. Uh, a of x is b of x. So let's assume that we have a query like a of uh, set. We want to see all the values of uh, set that m uh, make A true. So A of set is true if uh, well, we need to unify these two terms. So X, uh, will be uh, X will be substituted with set. So A of set is true if B of set is true. B of set is true is if G of set and V of set is true. G of set is true by substitute by instantiating set with the value one. So set will have the value one. That will make G of set true. And then the question is: Is V of set true? Yes, because V of x is actually a fact. It's always true. So one value is that will make a true is, is the value 1. But now we will try another solution for g, because there are other possibilities, so z can actually have the value 2 and 3 as well. Then at that point we have covered all the possibilities for g, and they have all been verified by, the, by this uh, v relation. So we will get z is equal to 1, z is equal to 2, and z is equal to 3. That's one solution. But notice that we have another rule for A, which, which we need to try as well. And A of set 
uh, is true if f of z is true. Uh, oh, sorry, we have a we have another solution for b first. Notice that we we tried first b of z is true if g of z is true and v of z is true, and we got the values one, two, and three. But we have another solution, uh, another rule for b, which has to be tried next. And b of z is true if if uh, z is equal to uh, z is equal to four and v of uh, four is true, and v uh, v of uh, z is always true. So one more solution is z is equal to four, and then we have covered the first or tried found all the all the solutions to this query b of x or b of z, and then there's another possible solution here. There's another rule. A of z is true if f of z is true and f of 5 is true. So z uh, equal to 5 will give this will make f true. So z equal to 5 is one solution. So we will we will get a solution to this query A of z is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So if I load this program, which I call cut3, and I post the query a of x or a of z, doesn't matter, I get 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Those are all the solutions will, which will make this uh, query true. Now, the o as I said earlier, the only difference between these two programs on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side is that we have a cut in the first rule for B. So we said earlier that once prolog guesses a value for G, and the first value that it guesses here is X being 1, and it'll then hit the cut, which is always true, and then it will verify this value 1, which, which which will actually be true, because v of x is a fact, then no other rule for g will be uh, tried. So g of 2 and g of 3 will not be tried. And not only that, no other rule for b will be tried, which means that the second rule for b will not be tried either. So we are basically eliminating the values 2 and 3 from the solution and the value 4 here as well because the second rule for b will not be tried. So we will get the value 1 as a solution, then we try the second rule for a which will give us the value 5. So if I load this last program here, and I post exactly the same query, I get x is, set this is 1 and set is 5. So this is what happens uh, uh, during a cut. We're eliminating all the other solutions for the relation that appears right before the cut, as well as all the other rules for the uh, relation appearing at the head of the clause. So let's finally see how we can use a cut to implement the not predicate. Remember we uh, saw some examples earlier using not. We not is a relation that uh, we can uh, use in queries. So here we're saying uh, one not one equal to one is false. So the question is how is the not predicate implemented? And it's actually implemented using a cut. And it's uh, uh, extremely simple. Uh, 
we have two rules for not. The first one says not of x is true if x is true and then we have a cut and then we uh, apply the fail predicate. So the first rule really tries to prove x and if it's successful the cut will apply and then we reach fail which is al always returns false. So if x is true then we will reach fail which results in not x being false because fail will, re uh, will be uh, false. Um, and notice that the cut actually prevents us from reaching the second rule. So if x is true, and since we have a cut here, we will never try the second, the prolog will never try the second rule. Because that's what cut does. It eliminates all the po other possibilities for x and all the other possible rules for not here. So that's the case where uh, x is true. Now f, if x is false, we will not reach this cut here. And then prolog will try the next rule, which will, is a fact and always returns true. So notice if x is false, then the not predicate will be true, but if x is true, then the not predicate here will be false. 